everyone. Welcome to the Dog Mom Knits YouTube channel. My name is Amanda and this is part one of how to knit a dishcloth. I have been a knitter since December of 2012 when I taught myself how to knit kind of on a whim. I just randomly decided I wanted to learn how to knit and I taught myself on YouTube. I would YouTube search whatever it was that I needed to do, how to cast on, how to knit, how to bind off, and I would just click through a bunch of videos until I found one I liked, and then I'd watch it a bunch of times, and that's how I taught myself how to knit. I've had a couple of people ask me to teach them how to knit, and so I thought, let's just consolidate everything into one playlist and learn how to knit. So this is how to knit a dishcloth. So I do think that a dishcloth is the is one of the best first projects for people who are learning how to knit. It's easy. It's portable. It's quick. And you get a finished object that you can immediately use no matter what season it is outside. So I'm going to break the playlist up into steps. So I'm going to teach you how to do something. And then I'm going to encourage you to go and practice a bunch of times and then come back to the next video, practice a bunch of times, come back to the next video, practice, etc. That is the pattern that seems to work for most of the people that I teach and I hope that it works for you as well. So for a dishcloth, you are going to need a pair of knitting needles. I recommend metal knitting needles for those that are just starting. These are a US 7. I don't think that's going to focus. These are a US 7 size needle. You can use a 6 or a 7. Patterns call for different sizes. And you are going to need a 100% cotton yarn. I am using Knit Picks Dishy Multi, but you can use, um, I think it's Lily and Cream or Sugar and Cream that are found at Michael's and Joann's and I'm sure a bunch of other places. I got my Dishy Multi on Amazon, but I will have Knit Picks also linked down below because they obviously sell their own yarn. First step, to learn how to knit is how to cast on. So let's get started. So the first knitting term that you need to know is cast on. To cast on, what that means, all that means is that you are taking your yarn and you are putting it onto your needles so that you can work it. There are a bunch of different cast ons. Um, they come in all different styles and techniques. The one I am going to show you is the most common and the one that is most commonly taught to beginners. So you're gonna need your knitting needles and your yarn. You're gonna take your end, that's another word, another knitting term, the end of the yarn, and you're just gonna unwind some. For this part of the tutorial, how much you unwind isn't that big a deal. So I have my end. I wound off more than I thought. I have my end down here. My ball of yarn is over here. And I'm just going to make a slip knot. I'll show that again. So I hold it, I hold my yarn like this. I twist, pinch, and pull. So one more time. Hold it like this. Twist, whoops, sorry, twisted the wrong thing. Twist, pinch, and pull. And you are going to put your needle into your slip knot and then just 
tighten it up. You don't want it too tight. You want to be able to move that stitch on your needle. And then I usually just hold it with my pointer finger. So you've got your, your yarn hanging. You've got your slip knot on the needle. You've got your yarn hanging down. So you have your end, the end of your yarn. Sorry, cotton yarn is sticking to itself. So you have the end of your yarn coming to the left and then the ball of yarn, oops, sorry, ball of yarn is to your right. So this is my end and this is my working yarn. Your working yarn is simply the yarn that is attached to the ball of yarn. So the end is in the front, the working yarn is in the back, and I have a slip knot stitch on the needles. Excuse me, on the needle. So to set up for the long tail cast on, I'm going to take my thumb and my pointer finger of my left hand, and I'm going to put them in between the end and the working yarn. So again, my end is hanging towards the front. My working yarn is going towards the back. I have a little, you know, a little opening right here in between the two. I'm going to take my thumb and my pointer finger and I'm going to put them in between the two strands of yarn and I'm just going to hold on to them with my other three fingers, <clears throat> excuse me, and then I'm going to spread them out so that I'm making a diamond. So I'll show that one more time. This is my end. This is my working yarn. Again, working yarn attached to the ball of yarn. I've got a little triangle here. So I'm going to take my thumb and my pointer finger, put them in between. I'm going to hold the two strands of yarn with the other three fingers. And then I'm going to spread the, my pointer finger and my thumb out so that I make a diamond. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm just going to bring it down so that it's next to my middle finger. And so this is what you're looking for. This is the long tail cast on, which is also sometimes called the slingshot cast on because it looks like a slingshot. So now I'm going to use my end and my working yarn to put stitches onto the needle, otherwise known as casting on. So this is your motion. Under, over, through, and then tighten up. So you have your slingshot. Your yarn looks like this. You're going to go under and through that diamond, or excuse me, that triangle. And then you're going to swing around and you're going to go under. And then you're going to bring your thumb back and just take your thumb out and then tighten up the stitch. Finley is cheering you guys on from the back. So, again, we return to this position always. So, when you let go to tighten it up, Tighten up your stitch, return to end in the front, working yarn in the back, pointer and thumb go through. These three fingers hold the yarn down here, spread out your pointer and thumb, and then you bring 
the yarn, excuse me, you bring your needle down and then you go under, over, through and tighten it up. Under, over, through. Tighten it up. Under, over, through. And then tighten. Under, over, through. Tighten. Under, over, through. Tighten. Under, over, through, tighten. So let me see if I can get my whole hand in there so you can see the motion that I'm doing. It'll be a little bit further away from the yarn, but it'll show you the twisting that I'm doing. So it's under, over, through, tighten. 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 And that's it. Look at all of those stitches that are on this needle now. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So what I want you to do is I want you to practice your cast on. I just want you to fill your needle full of cast on stitches. And then I want you to take them off the needle. So what that looks like is exactly what it sounds like. You're just gonna hold on to your stitches and pull out your needle. And then you're gonna take your ball of yarn and you're just gonna wind back up. The stitches will just come undone. Wind it back up. And then I want you to do it again. And again, and again, and again, until it feels comfortable. I don't like rushing. Um, it's a little bit like learning to walk before you really understand how to crawl. So just cast on a whole bunch of stitches, rip it out, cast on a whole bunch of stitches, rip it out, cast on a whole bunch of stitches, rip it out as many times as it takes for this to feel comfortable. And then when it feels comfortable, come back for part two and I'll show you how to knit a stitch.